Good day, my dear Buscanians, my students in the course DB100, St. John Bosco and the Preventive System. I'd like to welcome you to this course. And uh, this is uh, also a welcome to the life and work of Don Bosco. And let us begin with a prayer. And this will be the song entitled Hymn to St. John Bosco. Let us all join in singing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us remember that we are always in the holy presence of God.
we offer this semester for the greater glory of God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, dear Busconians, our course is entitled St. John Bosso and the Preventive System. And the course title is DB100, very easy to memorize. And uh, it is but proper that uh, at the beginning, you're still uh, somehow at the beginning of your stay here in Don Bosco's college students, we go immediately to knowing who Don Bosco is. And here is the course that you're going to take. It introduces the Bosconian to the life and work of Don Bosco as God's response to the needs and challenges of young people. It orients the Bosconian to the nature and the charism of the Salesian family and how the work is carried out by the educative pastoral community. We also bring to the fore the main works of education and evangelization. It introduces to the Bosconian, who will be future educators, the Salesian style of working with the young, the preventive system in its three elements, reason, religion, and loving kindness. And so let's have a review of uh, the timetable. So we have begun this uh, past week, weeks one, week one, that's uh, June 22 to June 26, that was last Friday. And tomorrow, we begin with week two, June 29 to July 3. And uh, I have uh, made this recording just so that we, we could uh, see the beginning of your course, the, what, we have, uh, what we should have taken for this week, which I have sent to you through a PDF file and also in your messenger, and also to guide you through the first requirements that you're going to make. And then uh, all through until week 12, which is the final exam. Uh, we will not strictly follow this uh, schedule with regard to the prelim and the midterm exam, but uh, I'll mention to you a little adjustment later. And here are the participants. Jonas Alcabasas, Ian J. Arrediado, MacBurgel Bergado, Mark Miguel Coner, Mark Jason De Leon, Erwin John Estan, Mar Fortuno, Marjun Francisco, Ian Raven Gardaya, Dave Lucky Javier, Marijo Lirio, Juan Paulo Marfil, Sheena Marie Mercado, JP Minor, John Ren Morato, Neil Kevin Narbacan, Jeanette Andrea Odehar, Christopher Onya, Sunny Palero, Dexter Pimentel, Charles Kent Quijano, Kain Santa Maria, and Randolph Torres. So we have 10 modules for this course, and uh, they're there on your screen. We begin with the needs and the challenges of youth today, which uh, was the topic of last week. And then for this week, we would be taking the life of Don Bosco, and then the work of Don Bosco, and then the Salesian family, and then you hear this up and the Educative Pastoral Community, or the EPC. And then there will be the midterm exams. So what we mean by midterm exams is that we, it is uh, the middle of the term. And then we have the work of education and the work of evangelization. And we will introduce to you the preventive system. And it's three elements, reason, religion, and loving kindness. And the final exam will be there, September 7 to September 14. Now, what will be our process, okay? So the Bosconians are expected to give three hours every week for this course. It will not be as what we do here that we would allot three hours for you, but uh, it will be on your own since this is distance learning. First, you allot an hour for the lecture that will be uploaded by the professor in his YouTube channel. This one will be uploaded to, your, to, to my YouTube channel. And uh, I have already sent it as a PDF file. For the current week, there will be a question given to the messenger group chat. And I believe uh, by this time, you already know that. I'll review that later on. And all students are expected to interact in the group 
chat discussion. The students will be graded on their contribution to the group chat. And then, next, an hour of personal reading of the selection given by the professor. The reading may be assigned for the whole group. For example, I give uh, this uh, a file to you, a document that you have to read. It's uh, one document for the whole class, and you will be, uh, your output will be, of course, uh, from each of you. Or I may assign several readings, and I would assign, for example, one reading to a group and another reading to another group, etc. Okay? Or I would assign a reading for each member of the class. Now, I, will also, I may also opt to require the student to watch an online video instead of a reading assignment that you would have to watch. And then that will lead to letter C, which is an R of preparing an output. The output will, could either be a reflection paper of about 600 words that you will be sending to me via email or yeah, by uh, word output, and then you send it to me. Or if not, a video of five minutes with the student presenting his or her reflection on the lesson and or the reading, okay? And the output should be submitted on, sun on Monday evening. So for this uh, past week, the, there's just a question, and that would be not require a reflection paper or a video, but it would just require you to go to the, that discussion on the Messenger group chat. Group chat. Uh, already, uh, there's already somebody who has submitted it. You still have uh, one full day because uh, it's already nine past nine this evening, and tomorrow... Uh, Monday evening, okay, you have to submit that on the messenger chat, okay. So the requirements are the following. For the reflection papers and video journal, that's 40% of your grade. And these are the major requirements of the course. As I said, you are expected to submit your requirement for the week on or before the Monday that begins the next week. Second, the messenger notes, what you will be submitting this week also. This is the discussion of the lesson, uh, lesson among the students of the course through messenger. And then also, I will ask you to give a good night talk. Each student will produce a video of a good night talk. That's three to five minutes. I'll explain this later. No? Uh, siguro narinig nyo na itong good night talk. Yung parang ginagawa ko sa aking Facebook page or on YouTube, yung Good Morning Talk. But this time it will be a good night talk to be submitted on July 31, 2020. I'll give you the topics later on, okay? Now, itong bibigay nyo na ito, this will be broadcast to other Bosconians and Salesian educators. And then the examinations, 40%. As I said, there will only be two examinations, the midterm exam, which is uh, in between July 27 to 31, and the final exam, September 7 to 14. Now, please listen to this. There will be this bonus. If you are able to submit on time every week your requirements, you will be exempted from the exams. For example, the weeks before July 27 to 31, kung kumpleto kayo, Kung nakapag-submit kayo ng requirements, whether they are reflection papers, video journal, or uh, the discussion on the messenger, then you could have that bonus. You will not need to take the exam. The same thing is true for the second half of the course after the midterms. If you'll be able to submit on time, then you will be exempted from the final exams. Okay, I hope that's clear. Siyempre, gusto natin ma-exempt, no? And the bibliography, ito, no? the biographical memoirs of St. John Bosco, the 19 volumes. Of course, you will, I will not require you to read that, but ito lang, no? I'll just be taking some uh, excerpts from that. And then the memoirs of the oratory by St. John Bosco, and Don Bosco and the Salesians by Moran Wirth. Okay? And then also Salesians of Don Bosco Youth Ministry Frame of Reference, and other titles will be given later. Diyan ko kukunin yung mga uh, lecture ko. Okay? 
Now, there are some urgent matters here. Uh, this was supposed to be given uh, before, okay, but please act on this by Wednesday evening, June 24, 2020. Please join the Messenger group chat. I think almost all of you are already there. Pag meron pang kulang, please tell them to, to join. Otherwise, no, uh, walang ano, hindi nyo makikita yung mga requirements. Or if you're, you or any of your classmates are not in the list, please send me a message. And then next, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay? And then please send a profile picture to my email. So there. Thank you very much. I'm your professor, Father Joel Kamaya, and also your rector. Okay? I don't know. Uh, I, it's a very rare time that I teach our college students, and uh, it, I consider it always a blessed moment. Okay? So now, uh, I'd like to continue with this course, at least already start with the first module. I have already sent this to you, and this will just be an explanation to guide you, to help you through, that, uh, through the course. And so I'll be again sharing this uh, part. Okay, it's about the needs and challenges of youth today. Okay, I hope it's clear in your screen. Okay. So let us begin. Uh, just a moment. I, I think I have to open uh, another file for this. Okay. There. And I'll be sharing this uh, screen to you. Okay. So, this is a question that we have to ask now when we study uh, Don Bosco and the preventive system. Who are the youth of today? Who are they? And uh, what are their needs and challenges? I'd like to begin with this anecdote, which uh, you may have already read. Enlightenment, said the master, means knowing precisely where you are at any given moment. No easy task at all. And he told of a popular friend of his, no, may kaibigan siya, already in his late 80s. Pero even at that age, ang dami pa niyang pinupuntahan ng mga meetings, ng mga functions. And one day, okay, or one evening, he was spotted at a party. Tapos tinanong siya, no, o oh, ilan ba yung a-attendan mong mga gathering this evening? And then yung matanda, no, that elderly gentleman continued looking at his notebook without uh, looking at the one asking the question. Sabi niya, six. Tapos tinanong siya, o, anong ginagawa mo, no? Kinahanap mo ba, tinitignan mo kung saan ka pupunta ang susunod? Tapos sabi niya, no. I'm trying to find out where I am now. And so that's from Anthony De Mello, One Minute Nonsense, page six. I didn't know if it makes sense to you, pero yung point nun ay, he should know where he is at that time. Dapat aware siya. And the objective is this, for this uh, course that we have. To create in the Busconian an understanding, an awareness and understanding of the reality of the youth condition. And an openness to allow themselves to be challenged by it. So, ano nga ba yung sitwasyon ng kabataan ngayon? Look at this, okay? It's a picture of uh, a boat in open sea. And uh, the boat is uh, there and the waves that are quite rough. So this is a, a simple parable. Of course, it's not a biblical parable, but uh, it's about this. Huh? It's night and the moon is obscured by the threatening storm clouds. On the dark sea, a small boat 
tries to make its way to the safety of the harbor. Siyempre, gusto niya, ano, it wants to be on the shore. Now, however, ang lalaki ng mga waves. Tapos itong boat na ito, it is just turning, rolling from side to side. Now, each time the boat dips into a trough, the walls of water obscure the view of the many twinkling lights. Kita nila, meron mga twinkling lights dun sa shore, sa coastline. Pero, ang laki ng waves, no? Kung minsan, nawawala sa kanilang uh, ano, line of sight. Then the next moment, however, it is right on top of a rising swell. At pag ganun, nakita nila, oy, pwede silang ano, mag-landing no? dun sa mga bright lights na yan. No? And also, the roller coaster on the amusement park of the, on the shore. So, ang dami mga ilaw. And they could be there, at least klaro na nanandun. No? Kaso lang nga, eto, biglang uh, kikidlat at kukulog. No? And then there are the heavy drops of icy rain and they chill the imagination back to reality. Nako, hindi pala enjoyable. No? Kita natin mga lights na yun, pero we're here struggling. Tapos yung boat with its crew struggles against the wind and the current that seemed determined to carry it out to sea. Tapos kita nila, the many colored lights on the beachfront, ay they're inviting. Parang ang sarap pumunta ron. Yet, Hindi dapat yun ang sundan nila. It is the penetrating beam of the lighthouse that must be found. Dapat yun ang susundan, yung ilaw ng lighthouse in order to ensure a safe entry into the calm and security of the harbor. Now, anong kailangan dito? The navigator's skill and the power of the boat's little engine. They're very necessary at a time like this. When any error of judgment, any rash action, or any mechanical weakness can easily spell disaster for the struggling boat. Ano yung analysis natin sa situation na yun? Na yung mga kabataan, young people, they're like that boat on the stormy sea. Why? Kasi kadalasan we see them tossed about in the sea of life. Parang uh, they're in a storm. Tapos yung mga iba't ibang kulay na mga ilaw, the many colored lights along the shore, ah, iba't iba yung ibig lang sabihin, no? or each country and each culture. No? Ano ba yung mga yon? They could be distractions, they could be uh, this, uh, uh, yung very pleasing to the eye, pero pag yun lang, pin, nag, kung nag-focus ka ron, ah, you will lose sight of the steady beam of the harbor Lighthouse, mawawala ka. You will not land safely pag yun lang ang susundan mo. And you know, young people, they're searching for the truth. But they're fragile. And they're tossed about by the storms of confusion, the currents of the times, and the conflicts caused by their unsteady emotions. Nandiyan yan, no? The youth are, many of them are confused. Tapos yung iba nadadala, no? Kung saan na, no? Kung saan mas... Comfortable, pupunta sila ron. And then yung iba, very conflicted and unsteady yung emotion nila. But no doubt, they have an inner strength of their own. But they require the sensitive and loving guidance of a friend. They cannot do it on their own. They need someone who understands them. Someone who is on their side and can show that he loves them. Let's ask this question. Na, sino ba yung mga Kabataan, who are the youth? Sabi ng United Nations, they're the persons between the ages of 15 and 24. Nandun ba kayo sa age na yun? Mm -hmm. Dati nga, sabi no, ng World Youth Day 1995, they're about 15 to, ano, from 15 to 39. Pero sabi nga yun, ay mukhang sobra naman, no? 39 na, hindi pa makasettle. So they put it 15 to 24. Some, they put it 18 to 30. And it's sinabi ng church, no? It's about 15 to 30. So, you still belong to the youth? Yes. Okay? Now, I had the good fortune of uh, going to Italy from February to March of this year in order to join what we Salesians call the General Chapter 28. The 28th General Chapter of the Salesians of Don Bosco. Ano ito? The gathering of Salesians from all over the world. 
simula dun sa successor ni St. John Bosco, no? yung Rector Major of the Society of the, Saint, of, uh, the Salesians of Don Bosco, Father Angel Fernandez Artime, his general counsel, tapos lahat ng mga superior ng lahat ng provinces around the world, and then the delegate from each of those provinces. Ako ay delegate. And so I was there, and we talked about an important question. What kind of solutions for the youth of today? However, itong question na ito, hindi lang namin sinagot nung February to March na yon. In fact, hindi nga natapos na because of the COVID-19 crisis. Pero we have reflected on it even two years before that when we started to make the, all the solutions around the world aware of this question. Anong klaseng solution ang kailangan ng mga kabataan ngayon? And each of the solutions in the different houses, pati rito sa Kandubang, we were reflecting on that to contribute to our uh, Salesian province na nagkaroon din ng uh, provincial chapter. And then those different uh, provinces, they sent their output to Rome and they gathered all these. And then an product, yung working document na, ng, ano, ng theme ng chapter. Una, no? And the, one, of the, the products, one of the products of this is ano ba ang sitwasyon ng mga kabataan ngayon? The question that we are now asking, the needs and challenges of youth of today. So what's about the world of youth? Okay? At sabi, no? Most countries in the world, in most countries of the world, young people constitute a high number in society, marami yung kabataan. In some places with a high birth rate, ang laki ng population, no? growing proportion of the population. However, suitable educational structures and genuine opportunities for their growth and development are not always available. Sa ibang bansa naman, there's a marked decline in number. Kakaunti yung mga kabataan and therefore kasi konti sila, Pati yung impact nila sa society, sa society, konti lang. And ang daming mga kabataan sa buong mundo, no, they're living in conditions of poverty and destitution. Why? Because of conditions of social inequality and iniquitous policies of exploitation. Ang daming mahihirap, even in misery. Tapos inequality, no? Parang uh, hindi sila, no, yung mga mahihirap, hindi na rin yung bosses nila, or pabor sa mayaman, or sometimes they're exploited. And even the, the laws, no, yung mga batas nila, they favor exploitation. Halimbawa, yung uh, young people who are working, they're not properly compensated. Many children and young people are forced to leave their own countries. They become migrants along with their family, with their parents, for, of course. And then there are many refugees and evacuees. Ang hirap na sitwasyon. Many young people living in disadvantaged situations, even within their own cultures. Hindi nga sila, ano, nas, nandun nga sila sa lugar nila, sa bansa nila, pero dun pa rin. Disadvantaged pa rin sila. Exploited pa rin sila. Excluded pa rin sila. In other contexts, young people are economically and socially well off who are often increasingly unsettled. Mayayaman nga sila, no? Walang problema sa nakakakain sila every day and they are live in luxury. Kaso lang nga, yung personal na buhay nila medyo mahirap, unsettled for many reasons. At ang nagsasuffer ay yung kanilang relationships, family back breakdowns. Tapos, kuminsan, they're left on their own. No significant adults together with them. And so, the young generally are excluded from the adult world also. Kumbaga, uh, naichipwera sila. Gumagawa naman decision, yung mga adults, about them, and they're not even involved in those decisions about them. I think sinabi ni Pope Francis now, which is uh, very true. Sabi niya, 
dun sa kanyang uh, uh, apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium, sabi niya, I want to say with regret, kinalulungkot kong sabihin, the worst discrimination which the poor suffer is the lack of spiritual care. It's uh, so grave enough that there's poverty, you know, a misery economically, maybe even morally. Pero ito pa, no? They lack spiritual care. The great majority of the poor have a special openness to the faith. Ano sila? Malalim yung pananampalataya nila. They need God. And we must not fail to offer them His friendship. Dapat ipakilala natin sila sa Diyos. Dapat i-open natin sa kanila yung kanyang blessing, yung kanyang salita, yung mga sakramento, and a journey of growth and maturity in the faith na dapat sila'y maging kabahagi nitong pananampalataya natin itong ating simbahan. Our preferential option for the poor must mainly translate into a privilege and preferential religious care. So, ang daming ibang problema. Ito, pagtuonan din natin ang pansin to. That spiritual poverty of the young. And as we look at this world situation, ito yung nararamdaman natin kung ano yung narinig natin sa gospel. Mark 6.34 And Jesus, when He came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. We also look into the features of youth culture. Oh, alam niyo yung mga icons dun sa right, no? The digital environment. It provides the setting for the contemporary world and for many young people, including you, I believe, it is already their natural habitat which determines the way they learn things, establish relationships, and perceive reality. So yun yung ano, na, naipanganak na kayo na may internet na. Yung mga mas bata pa sa inyo, pinanganak sila, at ano na, yung buhay nila na yung apps, yung mga gadgets, etc. That's the natural habitat. It determines the way they learn things. Marami kayong natututunan, from the digital environment. Diba? You learn cooking, no? You just watch, watch YouTube. You learn many things from the internet. And then you establish relationships, friends, no? Oy, gano, may, na, saan kayo nagkakilala? Nagka, nagkakilala kami online, no? And sometimes, if it's already an established relationship, even in the family, you continue strengthening it through that. And then the way you perceive reality, ano ba yung katotohanan? Ano ba yung, uh, yung news? Ano ba yung balita? Ano ba yung, uh, yung dapat malaman? Ay, yun yung nasa digital environment. However, the web and social media are a reality with two faces. Isa, a place of meeting and communication like what we're doing in our lessons. Like what we're doing in inter interacting with each other. Huh? It's very common now during the meetings or for meetings, what do they use? Zoom, okay? Or Google Meet. But then it's also a reality, okay? With this face of isolation and manipulation. Na imbes na makapag-connect ka, ayun, you disconnect with the others and then you are on your own. Nakatingin, no? Uh, you and your tablet, you and your uh, and your app, no? Or ikaw lang nanunood dyan. And then also manipulation. You are influenced. Kung positively, that's great. But then sometimes you're, uh, you're also influenced negatively or you are hypnotized, manipulated by what you see. In the, in the internet. Pero hindi lang yung digital environment, no? There's also sensitivity to ecological issues and protection of the environment. A lot of young people have become champions for this. Part yan ng ano natin, di ba? Ng uh, ating vision mission. Integral ecology. 
And in this field, as in other social issues also, justice, solidarity, active citizenship, and the young often show themselves capable of commitment. That maybe, maraming mga may misconception, ay, mga kabataan, walang pakialam yan. Yung mga kabataan, they're dissolution. Not necessarily. Kasi there are many who are open to serving others and to voluntary service. And I think yung mga buskonians, ganun, no? that you serve other young people. You know, another emerging feature of youth culture is this, the area of body, affectivity, and sexuality. Now, when you talk about these, especially relationships, no? affection, sex, it is a topic that uh, never wanes, and it always comes to the fore. And the transformations in affective culture raise new questions in the field of anthropology, ethics, and education that we cannot underestimate. Young people are particularly sensitive to the role of women in the church and society. And then young people and faith. Tingnan yung picture na ito, no? Young people praying, basketball players. The relationship of young people to religion is profoundly influenced by the cultural, social, and religious context. Dependian kung nasan sila, no? In some countries, yung Christian faith, no? Our faith is a lively shared experience which young people easily assume from infancy. Tayo binibinyagan, no? When we are very young, and therefore we live through this faith, we grow in the faith. And then other settings, you find religious indifference and secularization. Yung mga dating bansa na nagpapadala ng missionaries, yung uh, even European countries, dati sila yung mga missionary natin dito, but then when you now go to their countries, ayan, religious indifference, wala silang pakialam sa religion. Secularization, no? they don't even speak about God, about Jesus. Now that leads to a lack of significance and relevancy of faith. Ito pa isa, no? Because there are scandals in the church, now that increases the distance between the young and the church. Kasi gusto ng mga kabataan is for people to be authentic, hindi plastic. And when the church speaks, are they credible? So, it's very difficult to make a credible proclamation if there are these scandals. Ngayon, let's uh, focus on those teaching the faith. Many educators, no? they experience a notable sense of disorientation. Ano pang gagawin natin? Ang daming mga challenges in communicating the faith. We're not prepared for them. Halimbawa, itong mga bagong problema ng mga kabataan. Ay, we did not see that before. Ngayon, we see young people, even among our students, saying, I don't believe in God. And that's a challenge that we are now facing. And there are still many others. The problem of depression, now, how do we deal with that? There are some regions around the world where young Christians are a small minority. Limbawa, yung sa Indonesia, no? Thailand, and the other places where Christianity is not the majority religion, they sometimes face discrimination and persecution. Sila uh, ano, dito hindi natin ganong nararamdaman yun. Pero dun sa mga lugar na yun, where they are the minority, they feel it, they live it. In any case, contact with the young shows that in them is alive, even though not always evident. Ano yung nakikita natin sa mga kabataan? Maybe they don't, uh, some do not really are not into organized religion, pero anong maririnig mo sa kanila? That they are searching the meaning of life and they have an interest in spirituality to which we do not always know how to respond. And then we have the expectations of the young. What do they expect? Young people demonstrate in many ways the desire for significant adults. Nagkahanap sila ng mga gagabay sa kanila. At yung mga tao na kanila mapagkakatiwalaan. 
sometimes they see this, no? If there's uh, somebody good among the leaders in civil society, I don't know who among our politicians could be significant adults or religious from among the religious, like and the priests. Say, Father, no, I pwede kong gawin ano yan. A spiritual director, no? And I hope I can be helped by him, no? Yan. O kaya mga teacher, if you find the teacher who will be able to help you, then that's great. Now, I'd like to share this to you, no? From GC28. Um, this uh, thought. From us Salesians, they ask that we return to live with them more. Father, brother, sana makasalamuha namin kayo or makasalamuha ninyo kami, no? To go out to meet them where they are. Saan? Go to the playground, social media, to lead them once again to come into our houses and into the things we are doing. The young want Salesians to be more spiritual guides and less managers of work and to help them wisely to respond to the deepest questions that they have in their hearts. In many ways, the young people of today are saying to us, we wish to see Jesus, this is from John 12, 21, and thus manifesting the healthy restlessness that characterizes the heart of every human being, which is in the final document of the Synod, on young people, the faith and vocation, and vocation. Ito, the restlessness of spiritual seeking, the restlessness of the encounter with God, the restlessness of, restlessness of love. Ano yung big sabihin nun? Hindi mapakali dahil gusto nila makita ano ba yung say ng buhay. Also, hindi sila mapakali dahil gusto nilang makilala yung Diyos. O kaya, hindi sila mapakali kasi gusto nilang magmalasakit, gusto nilang magmahal. And the young people want us to be close to them and welcoming, open when without prejudices, ready to form genuine relationships of friendship, and able to spread joy and optimism. And from this point of view, the dimension of consistency and of personal and community witness to life becomes particularly important. And this is very important, no? What do you see in the picture? That's Jesus accompanying a young person. So they're walking on the shore. Any accompaniment? Accompaniment is yung ano, paggabay. Hindi lang ginagabay, no? Yung kasama, no? Kasama, sinasamahan niya yung kabataan, that young person. So, that's very true, no? Accompanying, no? Giving guidance, advice. But also, importantly, involvement of the young. Kasi yung mga kabataan, they are saying in so many ways that they want to be protagonists. Anong ibig sabihin ng protagonist? Pag nanood kayo ng pelikula, yung protagonist, hindi yun yung extra, hindi yun yung kontrabida, pero yun yung bida. The main character. And not just those for whom things are done when it comes to animation, reflection, discernment, and decision process, making processes that concern them directly or indirectly. Dapat katuwang yung kabataan sa mga ito. And then, finally, we have the presence and involvement of families. You know, the profound changes affecting families and the renewed attention of the church on their role in education and the handling on of the faith also involve us. Now, on the other hand, the family is going through a period of crisis, which is having a decisive impact on the world of the young. And on the other, it remains an essential point of reference in development. Maybe sabihin nito, no? Na more than ever, we see the family. The role of the family has increased. Lalo na ngayon, no? the role of education, hindi uh, pakayang face-to-face. -face. Maybe for college students, it's uh, less challenging, but more challenging for the families are those in basic education. Ngayon, hindi nila pwedeng iaas sa lahat sa eskwelahan. No? Kailangan bantayan yung mga anak namin. Kailangan ganito because nasa bahay sila. At hindi lang yun, no? yung handling, handing on of the faith. 
saan sila natututo ng pananampalatay? Hindi sa school, hindi sa simbahan. Saan sila dapat matutong magdasal sa bahay? Kaya nga ngayon, it's very timely. Nung nagkaroon ng lockdown, it has returned no? to the family, that role of teaching, especially giving, handing on of the faith. At nakita din natin na, yeah, the family is going through a period of crisis. Sino nga ba yung pamilya ngayon? Ano ba yung mahirap ngayon when we do family ministry? And there are others who are going through difficult times. And as for our help, Father, tulungan mo ako sa anak ko. Father, tulungan mo po ako sa asawa ko. No? Ano pwede kong gawin? Father, yung mga magulang ko, eto, no? So they ask for our help. In some cases, there are also families which do not concern themselves with the education of the children and neglect them. Ah, bala sila sa kanilang education. Basta may pasok sila sa school. O kayo nang bahala riyan, ha? Wala kami. That time is with you. Parang ganun, no? And hindi mo na sila maasahan na tumulong maging katuwang doon sa education. And then also, there are a lot of wounded families, no? Families who are hurting. Maybe loss of other family members. Maybe yung pagkawatak-watak nila. Maybe yung mga conflicts, yung away nila. And the institution of the family itself being questioned. Valid pa ba yung family? And they, these are challenges for us raising questions that we are not always ready to answer. How do we answer them? And then, finally, we have characteristics of you. Tingnan ninyo, no? Are these the characteristics of youth? Desire for solidarity, no? These are positive. Identity reform. Search for unity, peace, meaning. It's very strong in the young. Youthful energy and idealism. Sense of community, wanting to belong. Gusto nila, laging may kasama. Yearning for the spiritual. Nakita natin kanina, no? They, so many young people are spiritual. Rejection of what is hypocritical. Ayaw nila ng plastic. They want people who are truthful, who are witnesses. And then positive and concrete action and involvement. So yan, gusto nila yung to be protagonists. And then there are also negative aspects. Individualism. Ano nila? Uh, gusto nila sila na lang. No? Self-interest. Opportunism. May, you know, yung, they, they take advantage of uh, situations. Maybe sometimes in a negative way. Or sense of independence. Malaya ako. No? Hindi ko na kailangan ng mga adults. And sometimes it becomes a license na to do things na, no, na hindi dapat gawin. And then they're there. No? They have uh, changing values, ideologies, pabago-bago. No? Yung huli narinig nila, yun ang tinataguyod nila. And then their involvement in conflicts, sometimes political, sometimes racial, or religious, or social in nature. Unemployment, ang daming kabataan na nag-graduate na ng college pero walang trabaho. Secularization, religious indifference, hindi na naniniwala sa Diyos, hindi na nagsisimba. Instability, violence. Instability yung hindi ano, mapakali, no? Hindi mapaglagay. Palipat-lipat ng trabaho, palipat-lipat ng course. And then violence, no? What we have seen, especially in conflicts. And then a lack of good relationship with adults, for example. And then their family breakdowns. And then loneliness. And even especially now in our times, depression. And then also a fear of the future. Takot silang mag-decide. Takot sila anong mangyayari. Kaya nga, pag tinanong mo sila, oh, ano, let's, are we committed? Pwede bang, ano, can you take this? Or sa mga papasok na seminaryo, ano, papasok na ba? And then, umaatras sila at the last minute. Why they fear the future? And they have a feeling of powerlessness. Wala akong magagawa riyan, Father, tungkol diyan. And then there's that inability to be constructively critical or sometimes they are not objective, they are biased. So all these, no, positive and negative aspects, how well do we know 
young people. Okay? So that's a very interesting uh, discussion here. Now, here is the question for reflection, which I believe right now can already be answered. Di ko alam at the latest, no, who already sent it. But please do send them at once, no? Do not wait for the last minute. Para na sa gayon na ma ano ko na mabasa ko rin and I could uh, say my you know appreciation also. So after listening to the first module and reading it, write your reflections. What are the needs and challenges of the youth of today? Okay. About two hundred words, no? Siguro one hundred plus or minus ten words, no? One ninety to two ten. Please write your answer in either English. Pwede kayo magtagalog, no? Filipino. Deadline will be tomorrow, 2020, Monday at 9 p.m. No? By the time you might be listening to this, no, it's already June 29, but 9 p.m. And the note, no, Andrea has already fulfilled the requirement for this module. So she's uh, very much in as a candidate for the exception for, from the midterm exams. Okay? So there, I think that's uh, very uh, relevant, no? this uh, requirement of yours. Just to wrap up, no? I'd like to remind you that uh, we have been speaking, no? not only as young people, but maybe as uh, people who would be adults later on, who would be teachers, who would be parents. And we're speaking about the major issues affecting young people. But we would not leave it there, okay? Uh, we would find the way of taking up the conclusions maybe with young people themselves. We could ask, kayo, ano ba yung ano, feedback nyo? And it's good na you yourselves who are taking this course are young people. And that's why this is very important, very relevant for you to answer that question. What are the needs and challenges of the youth of today? And we will see later on how do we deal with this, no? What is our response to these needs? And please uh, do email me your questions or you may send it to me. You may uh, PM me or you may put it there in the group chat. Okay, wag kayo mahiya, no? Pwedeng Tagalog, pwedeng uh, yung, or pwedeng mag-English, no? But do not be afraid, no? I'm, uh, I'm just here to answer your questions. And I end this with a prayer. No? Let's end with the prayer for young people. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We offer to you, loving God, the gifts and needs of youth. Bless them with your guiding grace as they face the challenges and the opportunities in their lives. Touch their hearts with the gentleness of your love, that they may know they are valued and are valuable beings. Send your spirit of hope to their lives, that they may believe in themselves and know they are needed in this world. Grace them with the gift of joy, that they may celebrate life through laughter and tears alike. Guide us as we continue to grow in appreciation of the many gifts of young people in the ministry opportunities we offer to them, in the journey of faith we walk with them, in our shared mission as a community called to discipleship in the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. John Bosco, pray for us. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, I thank you for listening. And uh, I'll be back this week for the next module. And that is our response. And that is uh, leading back into our knowing more who Don Bosco is. So with this, no, I'd like to greet you all. Have a great week and God bless you all.